Hello guys, it's Victor once again. Welcome back to my channel. As I promised, I'll be doing a YouTube tutorial on simple ways of um, improving your writing skills. As I often say, the difference between that candidate that got a scholarship and the other one that didn't get it is not necessarily or always because the one that got it has um, a better result or better experience. But it's often the case that the one that got it has a better communication skill and was able to sell him or herself better than the ones that didn't get it. So most times I receive lots of um, competitive um, statements of purpose or proposals to read and I think most of the people I, I assist in editing their, their work have very good um, background or degree or volunteer. They've done a number of things. But the major obstacle I've noticed is that people are finding it difficult to actually communicate this um, achievement, this um, accomplishment in writing. And this is a big, um, a big problem, if you ask me. And yes, I know there are several people who have gotten in touch with me to probably review their essays and um, things like that. At the moment, I have several things to do and um, already have a backlog of essays to review. So please, at this point, I do not think I would receive... Um, any any more essays review any more essays i'll try to finish the ones i have presently but um yeah for now i think um i have to suspend reviewing essays or editing essays and focus on them uh, my phd and other things i i have to do and probably to resume soon i hope to 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 combine these um, different aspects of my life the youtube um teaching assistant phd and every other thing i think people in the past have done it and um I think I'll, I can also do it, but for now, these are just some um, beginnings, you know, new beginnings, and I have to settle down and, and get used to multitasking. So that's it. So today I'll be concentrating on sentences. Yes, sentences are quite important, but they sound quite um, simple. Probably we did this in primary school and secondary school. But I'm not going to go into the grammatics or the syntax of sentences. I believe we've done this already. Probably English students or English literature students or grammar students might want to start cherry picking. Is the tense and um, correct? Is there an agreement between the subject and the verb? But I won't be going into that. But I'll be going into the general um, theme of clarity. So after reading this particular paragraph or this particular sentence, do I understand the details of this sentence? I think it's important to, 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 to highlight these things. That even native speakers might even make mistakes here and there when it comes to grammar or spellings and things like that. But at the end of the day, the question a listener or a reader is asking is, do I understand what is being communicated? And that is what I want us to emphasize in this video. So I'm not saying that you should throw your spellings out of the window or do not consider grammar rules because you need to um, fulfill basic requirements or basic instructions in grammar and syntax for your right up to be understandable in the first place. So there are basic requirements you should reach for, for readability. But apart from that, I wouldn't be pinpointing no little mistakes here and there. But I would be concentrating on general clarity, meaning, and um, yeah, able to sell yourself whether there's a little grammar, grammatical error here or there. And um, talking about grammatical errors, there's um, this um, app called um, Grammarly. I hope you're aware of it already because it has been around for a while. It helps you check of your grammatical mistakes and it's actually free of charge checks your spellings even gives you a ranking over 100 and um checks a paragraph for you and see checks for inconsistencies and things like that and rates you and gives you um, indicators of where you need to improve there's a free version i think you can go for it there's also an um a premium version where you have to pay so this is not um, a sponsored video but it's something i use and it has helped me a lot and um, the truth is that I'm actually dyslexic, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a story for another day. I'm slightly dyslexic and I think Grammarly has helped me a lot in sorting out um, more of these um, issues. So let's go straight to the sentences. We actually have different types of sentences. So you have the simple sentence, you have the complex sentence, the compound sentence, and even the complex compound <laughs> sentence. So I won't be going into the definitions, but I'll be giving you... Um, ways of using these kinds of sentences in your proposals or in your statement of purpose in your letters of motivation so it's important you consider the kind of sentences you use because sentences after all convey meaning convey thoughts convey ideas and if you want 
to convey your idea as clearly as possible i think there is need to 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 pay attention to the kind of sentences you use a simple sentence for instance is like um i wish to be admitted full stop is a simple sentence you we'll get a complex sentence like i wish to be admitted into your university which is ranked among the top in the world a complex sentence a compound sentence like a combination of both um several sentences are making it one i wish to be admitted into your university and i hope to um, utilize the resources available in the department for my um, future goals so these are two different sentences that you use a conjunction to put together there's also compound the complex compound sentences where there are probably two three four sentences sentences with a lot of clause tied together all to convey meaning so which of these categories of um, sentences should you use and i say all of them but be be careful of this um, complex compound sentences because a sentence should contain a thought so i wish to be admitted into your department which is ranked among among um, the best in the world that is fine that is clear there is no confusion about it but when you combine this with something like um, listing your research interest or listing members of faculty all in the same sentence becomes a little bit too much for instance I wish to be admitted into your department, which is ranked among the best in the world. And I hope to meet Professor James, who is um, a top researcher in the area of um, human security. Professor, there's no comma, there's no full stop, by the way. You put a comma and say, Professor, um, Professor B is also one of the top leaders of the, of, the, of, of the course. And I believe I'm going to learn a lot from him. And this is just one sentence, no full stop. There's probably a comma or a semicolon and you keep rambling and going like that. The problem with this is that um, it could become very hard to read because there are so many ideas being jammed together. And a sentence, as I said, should contain a thought or a set of related thoughts. So if you have another idea you want to bring in, why not start with a different sentence? I also understand the concern that um, a simple sentence might just be too short and you know it's like you're cutting your essence into little little bits and it doesn't flow i understand that but there's a beautiful mixture you could use without letting your lines or your sentences run into three four five six lines and yet i'm looking for a full stop i can't find any and that is what i usually call a sentence overload there are just too many things in these sentences and before i get to the end i've all forgotten what i started reading initially so why not break them down into a series of simple, complex, and compound sentences. So instead of a four-line sentence, why not do two sentences each? Yeah, break the four-line sentences into two, two sentences and another one sentence um, for two lines, then another one following. And I think you get clarity with that than giving the rundown of um, a sentence going to five, six, seven lines. And I'm like, come on, guy. If, and the another problem with these kinds of sentences, very long, is that you probably have problems putting the right punctuation you don't know whether to put a comma or a semicolon or a colon or you know or which conjunctions to use because the longer the sentence becomes the more prone you are to making mistakes so break it down into simple digestible forms not too simple though because you want to flow so i wish to be admitted into your department which is ranked among the best in the world full stop my research interests um revolve around human security um, peace building conflicts management and um, and um, multi-ethnic um, societies full stop um, professor a in your department is specialized in human security he has written a document about um, the effects of ethnicity in peace building full stop another professor in the department professor b has written extensively about the gender dimension of um, conflict in the developing world and i would like to work with her in this issue full stop you know it just it flows like that instead of packing all these things together just in one sentence and before you know it your review already has a has a headache so secondly i would like to talk about the linking words so words you use to show a um, relationship between sentences with the, between paragraphs so you have linking words like similarly or in addition or you could also even show contracts like um, saying something like nevertheless on the one hand or the other hand 
forest that you could say um, on the one hand why empiricists argue that um, human knowledge begins from the senses on the other hand rationalists claim that the mind is a play a more the mind plays a more important role in the acquisition of human knowledge full stop so these are two opposing ideas and because of the words you used we've been able to show that they are you are pitting them against each other but you could use the word like in the same vein if you're showing them agreements that um this particular scholar said this thing and in the same vein this other scholar said um, a similar thing what like addi um, additionally or in addition furthermore you know things like that would let your work flow and show relationship um, between sentences and even paragraphs you could also use phrases like um regarding regarding my work experience for instance you're starting a paragraph and you wish to talk about work experience so you want to make it clear to the reviewers that this particular paragraph is about work experience so you say regarding my work experience comma i have worked for five years as a consultant in the company and i've done this i've done that you could also say um as regards my um academic accomplishment or speaking about my academic accomplishment so they're giving things we call signpost so for instance if the reviewer is looking for your academic qualification there's already a paragraph that begins with regarding my academic qualification so it goes there and say oh this is where he mentioned or she mentioned something about academic qualification with reference to my work experience oh this is where she, she's talking about um, referencing so this is what we call signposted with that you make it easier for your reviewer or your reader to fish out ideas you know most times um professors or top academics can afford the luxury of them um, writing vague you know of writing things that are difficult to read well they've gotten to where they want to reach already they're already professors and already up there in their on the pyramid of their career but you you're an applicant or you're writing a proposal you want people to read and understand you can't afford to be vague so you make it as simple as possible for whoever is reading to understand what you're saying. So that is why you need to need, you use this um, um, this sign um, sign post. And I'm not saying that it is the tradition of every professor to be vague by writing. As a matter of fact, my academic what I call academic mentors, even though I often do not use that word, um, are those who are able to communicate complex issues but in simple understandable language but i have a number of them already they are top in their field but one thing that stands them out and make them and um, quite um quite lovable <laughs> to students is because they write in simple understandable bits even though they discuss complex and nuanced issues and i believe you can do the same so i'm not asking you to write as if you're writing for for primary school children but write with clarity you know you're not just writing to impress somebody you're writing because you actually want the person to understand that is very important in, to impress yes is part of it but you also want to at this stage for somebody to understand what you're writing so first remember sentence structure a sentence should not be too long contain one thought or two three related thoughts when your sentence starts getting into the third line the fourth line the fifth line be very careful i think it's time to split this sentence and this is what i call sentence overload then use linking words in addition furthermore similarly in the same vein contrary to what was said earlier you know you use that to show relationship and to flow and then um, signposting regarding my academic qualification which reference to my work experience speaking about my volunteer experience and you know things like that will help you give you know will make it flow and make your 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 writing more enjoyable and that's it guys quick tips about how to work with sentences with um signposting and with linking with linking words and there are several resources online just a simple google search will show you several ways of you know working with sentences and all these linking words i told you about so be 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 entrepreneurial when it comes to looking for 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 resources that will better you and um, would um, improve your skill in writing. I think it's very important. And also try to download the Grammarly um, app I talked about. The app would help you 
probably correct spellings, your sentence structure as well, and also give you suggestions. So I think it's something you should look at. And until next time, guys. So the next time I'll be talking about quotations, beautiful ways of using quotations in your work so you do not sound robotic. So quotations will be coming next, and I hope to see you later. And until next time, guys, stay inspired. Bye-bye.